Hello, today I'm going to show you how to create a circle graph for your statistics project. Um, you want your circle graph to show your populations. Um, remember, you were asked to uh, compare two populations. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create one that looks like this. So what you'll need is your results either on um, the Google Forms or the um, sheets that we collected um, from before. If you haven't done that one yet, go back and watch that video on how to sort your data. And um, But in mine, I have 105 kids and 97 adults, and that's actually up one from um, earlier today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off accepting responses. That way it doesn't mess with my data anymore. So now I have 105 kids and 97 adults. And the other thing that you're going to need is a pie chart creator. And so the easiest way to get it, I'm going to link it for you, the one I created. Or if you, um, if you Google circle graph creator, the one that I'm using is the meta chart one, and it's usually the very first one that comes up. It says create a pie chart. So once you click there, you are going to um, have lots and lots of different options. So you can change your design. Now, you, there are some ads on here. Sorry. Um, you can change your design. You can also um, enter your data in. And so just for the sake of time, I'm not going to change the design any, but you can go back later and do that. So for the data, I'm going to have two slices because I have two populations, male or adults and kids. And so I'm going to put adults as my first population. And there were, what, 97 adults. And then kids as my second population. And there are now 105 kids. You can change the colors. If you don't like the green and orange color scheme, you can make your kids, you know, you can make them whatever color you want to. So maybe I want purple and maybe I want like a bluish color. Go a little bit lighter. There we go. Make sure your co colors contrast enough so that you can be able to tell the difference. So if they're too similar, you may not be able to tell the difference there. So once you get the data in, you can display it and it will go ahead and give it to you. Um, now, if you want percentages on yours, then what you're going to do is click on the next link that says labels. And you can go down here and change it. Instead of name and value, you can do name, value, and percent if you want to do that. Um, for the graph title, I'm going to label this sample size. I want you to label yours also sample size. You can put an in additional information on there, but put sample size on there. For source, you can either leave it blank or you can put Google Forms because that was the source where we got our data. So you can choose that or if you want to put your name here. Honestly, whatever you want to do is fine. One other thing that I want to make sure that you know that you can do is increase the size because sometimes 10 point font is very small. So maybe I want my title to be like 18 point and I want each of my labels to be like 14 point. And then every time you change it, you can click on display and you can see like sample size, Michelle Gross, um, if you wanna do that, um, or you could go back and change it to whatever you want to. So if you're happy with that, you wanna copy it. If not, you can go back and fix it. Pause the video if you need to work on that a little bit more, and then come back when you are ready to copy and paste it in. Okay, so once you have it the way you want it to be, there are a couple ways you can copy. You can click up here and you can download this image if you want to. That is a very easy way. It'll go into your downloads and then you can add it in later. So if you clicked it, um, and PNG and JPEG both will work. So now it's in your downloads. Another way is if you know how to use the snipping tool, um, I think like Control Windows S is on some on the Chromebooks. Um, for my MacBook, it's uh, if you're using a MacBook, Command Shift 4 is a snipping tool, so you can bring that up. Some of you all may have one that just does a screenshot, um, and you can do it that way. And once you have it over here, you can simply Control C and copy it and paste it. But either way, whether you um, download it 
as a file or if you screenshot it. Either way will work. Um, then when you're going into your statistics project slides, go to, so yours was going to look like this. You're going to go down to the second one that looks like this with a sample. Um, so to include this circle graph, one of two ways. If you screenshotted it, all you have to do is control V and it's going to bring it and all you have to do is kind of rearrange how you want it to look. If you didn't screenshot it and you want to insert, then you're going to click insert image, upload from computer, and it should be in under your downloads. And mine is, it's the very first one on my downloads. And so then again, all you would do is um, change the size of it. So after that, then you can go through and you can write in. Now, if you want to make your graph bigger and your table smaller, like I would like to make my table a little smaller and make this a little smaller, and I would like to make my graph just a little bit bigger, you totally can. You can play around with this and make it look, customize it however you want to. Um, and you don't have to, it doesn't, as long as the information's on the page, you are good to go. And then for sample, um, number sampled mail. Now, some of you all, if you've got numbers written in there already, go fix it. So for me, my population is not mail. My population one is um, adults. And my population two is kids. And my number sampled for adults is 97. And my number sampled for kids is 105. And then you're going to answer the questions. How did, I should say your, sorry, how did your sample um, or how did the sample from your populations, how did you, oh, no, that's right. How did you, how did you sample, um, that should say, how did you sample your populations, maybe? I don't know. How did you sample your populations, random or convenience? Now, for those of us who put it on the Google form, this was random sampling because Miss Woods and I fixed it so that it would be um, random sampling. What biases occurred? Now, remember, bias is anything that um, might sway the information. So if you were like running out of time and you're like, hey, friends, take this survey or whatever. Um, or for me, I put kids, well, only seventh graders, almost all seventh graders took it. That would be a bias. And then how might bias uh, samples impact your overall results? Um, it doesn't give equal representation. So if you have bias, anything bias, it doesn't, it's not a true representative sample. And it is okay to put that in there. Your grade's not going to be lowered. Mine is not a true representative sample um, of my students because I said um, students or kids and my survey results came from seventh graders at Spencer County Middle School. So it is okay if you have some biases, just address that you have those. All right. Hope this video was helpful. If you not sure what to do on this one, again, come see me. I'll be glad to help you. And then you can watch the next video on um, how to create, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's the service questions. How to create a frequency table. So the next, the next um, video will be on how to create a frequency table. Bye, guys. Hope you um, were able to get a lot of information from how to create a circle graph. Have a great day.